Hi, and welcome to NoBB, where we build apps without using any black box components and study all the parts that make them work. Today we begin a series of episodes that teach how to make Dragon Ball effects programmatically in JavaScript without any sound or video editing software. At the end of the series, you'll know how to do something like this. Today we'll work with two video files and apply five types of edits programmatically in JavaScript. Let's begin by loading the videos in the browser and preparing the interface. We load the videos in two different variables using this function. When the first video is loaded, we get its width and height and initialize the canvas accordingly. Notice that because both my videos have the same proportions, I can just use the size of the first video here and there won't be any problems. I could make the canvas fill the browser, but I think it looks better if I leave a small margin here. Now that the videos are loaded, we need to be able to show frames one by one. And that's what we're going to do next. I made this function to process the videos, starting at the very first frame. It shows the frame of the first video, increases the frame number, then waits for a very brief moment and repeats the entire process. I use this value because the phone that I used records at a 30 frame per second interval. I also print the frame numbers here for reference. So let's see how it looks like. The first video plays until frame 130 or so, and then stays like that. That's because there are no more frames left. So we can set a condition here that the second video starts when we reach this point. Now, the first edit we do is make the second video play in reverse. To do that, we change this function slightly and specify here that we want to show frames from the back, but only for the second video. And now we get this, but the beginning part here is not really needed until frame 70 or so. And then there is this part where I try to hide the balloon in my hand while keeping the posture. Both of these parts need to be cut out. So instead of starting the second video at frame zero, let's start it at frame 70 instead and add a condition here so that when the frame reaches 107, it jumps to frame 333 and continues from there on. Let's see what we have now. The jump cut is okay. I'm happy with that because when the special effects appear later on, they will hide some of the imperfections. But here we need to make this transition smoother. I want to take advantage of this moving down motion and make the transition during that time because it will look more natural. I modified this value so that the second video actually begins to show while the first video is still going. And I add a gradual transparency to the first frames so that it blends in more nicely. Now this looks the way it should. One problem is that the ka and ha parts are too long when compared to the me parts of the attack. It was hard to shoot this in reverse and I just couldn't get it perfect. 
I want them to have roughly the same duration because I'm going to record the voiceover on top of this. So we can speed up these parts by skipping every second frame within these intervals. Now it looks great, but we will need to speed up this part as well. I was slow in moving here on purpose, because if I would have moved fast, my phone would add the greenish smudge here that will be very hard to handle when we track the balloon later and add the special effects. I will skip over more frames in this interval and make the speed up even more significant than in the other two places. One final thing we can do is add the fade in the beginning and at the end of the video. I do it using a function that draws a black rectangle over the entire canvas, but uses transparency as well. The fade will take 10 frames and go from totally opaque to fully transparent in the beginning and from transparent to opaque at the end. And that's it. You can get the source code and the sample video files from a link in the description. This source code has also an extra additional effect. And the first who can tell me what it is and how I made it will not get a shout out at the next video, but at the end of the Dragon Ball PFX series. The shout out today goes to two people. They didn't just answer the questions, but also gave me ideas for improvement. Bogdan proposed many things like different color spaces and to cluster the colors instead of using just nearest neighbor. He even pointed to an API for doing it. Dinu scienced the out of my roundness measure. He started by telling me how the computation can be made more efficient and gave plenty of qualitative examples. Then he even created a new method that can be trained to work on other shapes as well. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Stay tuned for next time when I teach how to add visual effects. Radu, signing out.